you was full of beans, you wanted to see the war, you wanted to get to it, you volunteered for it. Well, once you got in those trenches and you had a battery and a shell fire, machine gun and shell fire, you altered your tune a little bit then, you realised what war was like. Dear May, just a letter to let you know that I am still in the pink and hope you are the same. Is Wolverton still as quiet as usual? How is Barber's Picture Palace getting on? Do they still have full houses on Mondays and Saturdays? There's no picture palaces, theatres or anything here. I shan't stop in the army after the war. It's not good enough. Our sergeant says the grub is good, but there's not enough of it. We don't get as much as we did in older shots. I think the war will be over by Christmas. There's always plenty of aeroplanes fighting around here, and we can frequently see aeroplanes with shells bursting all around them. It rains very frequently here. I don't know whether the explosion of the shells have anything to do with it. Your loving brother, Albert. I'd like to peek over, see sign at its waking, but snipers are quick if you make a mistake. Back in the town where I was born, people are stirring this midsummer's morn. They have no cause to fear someone waiting to shoot them. It's only dawn's chill makes them shiver and shake. When Kitchener pointed his forefinger at me, I took up the challenge, went off to enlist. The barracks and square bashing didn't deter me of the life I had led. There was little I missed. I hadn't seen troops take a shell's direct hit. Bullets and barbed wire that tear men to bits. Now the life of a soldier looks so different to me. I don't play the hero, just try to exist. When I close my eyes, I see all the old places, the old carriage works stretching down Stratford Way. And half of my friends there, I see their tired faces as they come through the gates at the end of the day. The places we walked, the towpath, the track. Half of me wishes that I could be back there. But there's no use wishing what simply can't happen. I'm here till it's over and done, come what may. I'm here till it's over. When they came on leave, they'd come and see you and talk about it and say what hell it was. That trench life was... Because they were in there days and weeks and weeks in the same clothes and everything. And all 
verminous and everything. When Alf used to come home, he used to go and take his things off in the barn. What did he tell you of life? I mean, how did he, he wouldn't talk about it much. He used to say, Auntie, I, it, it's awful. It really is. It's dreadful, Auntie. Don't talk about it. Do you ever think of England When it's four on a shell-shocked morning You try staying awake, lad When your body cries for rest You try thinking of heroes when the best friend that you ever had Is lying out in no man's land With a bullet in the chest Oh, I can still hear the brass band playing I can still see us singing and marching While they take young men off to war To march me down from the top of the hill, that they march me up before. There's a quiet place behind the lines where crosses and in row on row, the list of missing and wounded gets longer every day. Kitchener told us when we joined. We'd be proud to hold our heads up high But don't try doing that here, son You'll throw your life away Oh, I can still hear the brass band playing I can still see us singing and marching While they take young men off to war I know 
You can't realise what it was, especially when you've got three brothers out there. The youngest one, he was only seven, he was mad to go, he was only 17, he gave his age as older. And he, he, he joined up. And I remember, well, I remember the boy in the kitchen before he was went away. He got the blooming cat in his arms. Oh, pussy, he said. <laughs> He was, uh, he was uh, talking to this cat before he went away. I was, it was most sad I didn't let him see me. He was wounded, but gassed he was, and he never got over that gas. He never did. Never got over the gas.
stands to and make you ready. Stand to be born in Hold the line right steady. Let bright burn through the flame. to be born in us. Hold the line right steady. And those who walked in war, and those who cherished peace, and those who walked It was all the time he was two hours on and four off, day and night, right through. Well now after several days, you'd come out of those trenches and then another company would come out and relieve you, take over, and then you'd drift back. Well now you used to go in that wood and rest and you had your own little graveyard in there. Well now after a short time, you came out for a proper rest, and that was a village, perhaps seven or eight mile behind the lines, you know, and there you celebrated. You were paid, and there you straight away, when you got your pay, you simply went in, and every other house was a restaurant, cup, what they call them, and uh, there you had uh, eggs, chips, and champagne, and vin blanc, and all that, and got that sort of Enjoyed your, your time while you were eight. Tickleless jam, tickleless jam, I like tickleless jam. Plum and apple in a one pound pot, sent from light in a ten ton box. Every night when I'm asleep, I'm dreaming that I am. Forcing my way through the garden bells with a pot of tickleless jam. Tickleless jam, tickleless jam, I like tickleless jam. Plum and apple in a one pound pot, sent from light in a ten ton lot. Every night when I'm asleep, I'm dreaming that I am. Kicking the old girl out of bed for a pot of tickleless jam. Every night when I'm asleep, I'm dreaming that I am. Kicking the old girl out of bed, kicking the old girl out of bed, kicking the old girl out of bed for a pot of When we was coming in and out the line at Plug Street Wood, every time you come out, there'd be somebody killed, one of your mates. And you used to, where we come out of the trenches through the wood, the duck board used to lead by our old our book cemetery. And I used to look at them crosses and I used to think, I bet I won't be long for on one of them. You know, that sort of feeling. And uh, any road, when we was out, the Padre said that there was a bishop coming to confirm anyone that would like to be confirmed. So I asked, was there anyone? I said, yes, I will. Because I had a feeling that, uh, you know, I might not long before we passed over, because you didn't know when it was going to happen. Oh, it done a lot for the, the, the damage to people the war did. It was always on the mind, the war was. I don't know whether it changed them, but they didn't forget the war.
No, none of the soldiers were the, there was in that blooming war. Behind a trench in Flanders, the sun was dropping low. With tramp and creak and jingle, I heard the gun teams go. When something seemed to mind me, a dreaming as I lay, of my own old Hampshire village, at the quiet end of day. Brown thatch and gardens blooming, with lily and with rose, and the cool shining river, so pleasant where he flows, white fields of oats and barley, and elderflower like foam, and the sky all gold with sunset, and the horses going home, and it's home at home, all among the corn and clover, home at home, when the time for work is over, all there's rest for horse and man, when the longest day is done, and they all go home together at the setting of the sun. Old Captain Prince and Blossom, I see them all so plain, with tasseled ear caps nodding along the leafy lane. Somewhere a bird is calling, and a swallow flying low, and the lads all sitting sideways and singing as they go. And it's home at home, all among the corn and clover. Home at home, when the time for work is over, all there's rest for horse and man. When the longest day is done, and they all go home together at the setting of the sun.
then we turned round and looked across no man's land. Well, all along no man's land, there wasn't a shot being fired, but it was lit up like daylight because all the time you see from their trenches and our trenches, they kept firing star showers and that lights up like electric lights in the sky. Well, when we looked across there, you could see all their blokes laying dead all over the place. If only an artist, a well-known artist, could have only stood there with us and painted that scene as it was there, and they took it back and hung it in the rooms or cabinet headquarters of other countries, they didn't have declared a war, not if they got any sense and see that hanging up. Our great attack had failed. We nothing left to give. Our wounded hanging in the wire. Had little time to read the good book before we went to sleep, you know. What I can recall mainly was the little bit she used to read as I passed through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Now then, I always remembered that, and you see, an old dear used to read it, and I used to say then, I did pass through the valley of the shadow of death. And I felt no evil. Those people that I killed, deliberately killed, I didn't hate those chaps. I didn't know them. I didn't hate them. I'm not only I'm sorry 
and I'm ashamed I'd done it because those young chaps might have been nice young chaps with a family of a couple of little kids and all that. You know, it, it's awful. There's nothing, nothing brave about it, heroes and cowards, there's no such thing. It's fifty long spring times since she was a bride, but still you may see her at each Whitsun tide in a dress of white linen and ribbons of green, as green as her memories of loving. The feet that were Three times wounded, 20 months of prisoner of war, so I can speak from experience and give my view of what the war was and why I didn't think there was such a thing as heroes and cowards. Now, if I weighed it all up and I said this, My view of heroes was the millions that lined up outside recruiting offices. That's my view of heroes. The cowards was those that lay dead in no man's land and the prisoners of war because I was one of them and they were no further use to that massive war machine which was nothing more than a machine and they was no further use to that. Now years and years later when we got old my old darling and me went to the Albert Hall on the 11th of November, British Legion Remembrance Service. Now at the end of that service, the lights was dimmed, the poppies slowly fell down from the roof, the buglers sounded the last post. And then a loud, clear voice said, 
at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them now remember who i leave you to judge that fading away like the stars in the morning losing their light in the glorious sun thus would we pass from this earth and its toiling only 